Yirashiyamase! Hello and welcome to Fataris' Kitchen. I'm your host, Chef Fataris. It's time once again for Shoot'em Up Saturday. And on the menu this Saturday, we have... Starship Avenger, Operation Take Back Earth. A newly released defense shoot'em up. What kind of taste will it have? Let's get cooking and find out. Starship Avenger recently released on the Nintendo Switch and will soon be coming to Steam. What kind of gameplay do we have here? In Starship Avenger, we're playing the role of the titular ship, the Avenger, but we're a fixed point ship that's defending against these wave of enemies. So as we dive into the gameplay itself, we're taken to the stage select screen. And here, as the title goes and implies, we're mounting an offensive to take back Earth. We're starting on Pluto, and we'll work our way deeper into the solar system. Going next to Saturn, then Jupiter, the asteroid belt, Mars, and finally planet Earth itself. Or well, specifically the moon, but still. So, when we select our stage, and we'll start with the first stage, Pluto, we're taken to our difficulty select. You only have normal available initially, but as you complete the one difficulty, the next difficulty up unlocks. Once we select our difficulty, we're taken to our ship selection screen. And here, you can select which type of Avenger you're looking to take for this particular stage. There are seven types total. We start with the weakest, the type B, the bullet type. Then, after we complete a stage, you will unlock a new type of Avenger every single stage you complete throughout the course of the game, for a total of seven different ship variations. The second one is the Type L, that fires lasers. The third is the Type M, which focuses on missiles. And then we start getting combinations. The Type BM, which focuses on firing bullets and missiles and the Type ML, which is missiles and lasers, and happens to be my favorite as well. There's also the Type A, which has all three of the weapons, and then the Type LO, which you unlock once for completing the game. And I'm not 100% certain what the O stands for in LO, but I'd like to go and think it's something like Laser Omega, or something awesome like that. It's possible to upgrade the ships with gold you acquire for completing the stage. You can see the cost is represented in the lower left of the screen, and it increases the higher you go. You can level the ship up all the way to level 5, and they start at level 1. So for our purposes today, we'll just be using the Type ML, my favorite one, so we can quickly show you the game and give you an idea of how it plays. So as I said, we're a fixed position starship, rather big though, and our goal is to prevent enemies from crossing this red line on our left. We ha do have a health meter located above the score in the top left, and we have a couple different meters going on in the top right, which I'll get to in a second. So, what do we control in this game since the starship we're flying doesn't actually move? We move this reticule around the screen, and you can fire your weapons, well, with a press of several different buttons, Y, L, or R. But, one thing you have to watch out for is when you're firing your weapons, as you can see in the meter on the top right, there's a red meter which will continually rise, and that's our heat meter. If we continue to fire our weapon for too long, that will get to the point where it overheats, and then we will be stuck waiting for our weapons to cool down. As you see, you get actually a really big warning that you're about to overheat. <laughs> it's actually a uh, poorly designed since it uh, appears on both the top and the bottom it actually obscures the meter that you have to be watching so one strategy I've found to effectively mitigating your heat usage is just tap fire your weapon especially if you're firing some slower fire weapons like the missiles and the lasers it actually works really effectively and you're still getting all the bullets and shots you need to out on the battlefield though it's more effective with a higher level ship So I'm going to go and slow my destroying of the enemies here so we can go and see a little bit of how they fire. There are multiple different enemy types and they behave in different ways. Some enemies like these will just be moving trying to get past us to get to the ship that we're defending, the Thor's Hammer, which is this ultimate weapon against these alien forces that have kicked humans off of, well, out of the solar system. We're defending that Thor's hammer, trying to get it all the way to Earth's doorstep. 
So as we play through the stages, inevitably we come to these sections where there are mini-bosses. Or, I guess, maybe sub-bosses, large enemies. I'm not 100% sure how you can, like, what you want to go and call them, but that's basically the way that they work. And we can't progress past the wave until we defeat them. So this is the mini-boss of the first stage. It is a kind of a cool insect-like enemy. Fully leveled up, though, he's not much of a challenge. Once you complete all the particular waves of the stage, and they, the waves do, the number of waves do increase as you get further into the game, will encounter the boss. And though there are different bosses in every stage, they do function kind of similar. So as you see here, there are four red car, uh, four red cores on this cube boss. Although it can like, choose to close the cores and defend them. So in order to clear this stage, to defeat this boss, we have to destroy all four of its cores. And some enemies have a significantly higher number of cores, it just depends. Uh, but that's the basics of the boss fights. So, a couple things I haven't covered in the top of the right. That meter there allows us to, once we build the full sections of it, we can release a barrier which will defend our ship from enemy shots. So if we are taking a lot of damage, that's one possible thing we can do. But there's also the limit release. Oh, an enemy squeaked past us at that point. It goes and shows you the first one, and I think every 25% of the Thor's hammer's life, uh, you see the enemy sneak by again. It's a highlighting, hey, you're letting enemies pass. So if we use the release limiter, then we can fire our weapon in a very powerful, fast state without overheating at all. It's a great way to make short work of really big waves of enemies as well as bosses. So the way that we build that meter that we use for the barrier and the release limiter is to just defeat enemies. The more enemies you defeat, the faster that meter fills and boom, you're good to go. Once you clear a stage, we get the results screen here, and we earn that gold that we can use to go and upgrade our ships. But for any damage that our ship has taken, we do happen to pay a repair cost, so that will uh, subtract from the total amount of gold earned. And that, in a nutshell, is Starship Avenger Operation Take Back Earth. So, as far as my thoughts on it, let's get to the minus flavors first, since, well, there are unfortunately a few that I feel are big detractors. So, first off, the music is really generic, it's not really anything to go and get excited about, and it doesn't really help much with the pacing of the game itself. Then, the second part that is of the minus flavors is the pacing so you might not seem like so bad with a fully powered up ship but especially your first playthrough on the each stage when you're tackling it with relatively low level ships things can go and take forever for one thing certain enemies have certain weaknesses that you can only or ease only easily defeat using certain types of weapons. So if you happen to go and take the wrong kind of ship, if you don't choose to retire, it's going to go and be a really long slog that will probably just end up in, with you getting defeated in the end. Not really that great for a stage. And by long, I mean long. I've uh, had uh, instances where I've played a single stage of Starship Avengers for almost 20 minutes. So the stages themselves are uh, the next minus flavor, then they're just too long. The, it helps when you have a more powered up ship, because it, like the pacing goes significantly faster when you completely destroy, or when you defeat waves, the next waves will spawn in that much quicker, and you're able to get through the stages in shorter periods of time. But even the first stage, the first time I played it, it took about 8 minutes. No, nowhere near the 
two to three minutes we can complete it with a fully powered up ship. And then you have the higher difficulties which add even more enemies and more waves and it just gets, even if you can easily defeat them with a powerful ship, it just takes too long. But there are a couple plus flavors. I do really like the different ship variations that exist in the game itself. You're kind of pigeonholed into using certain ship variations earlier on in the game as they're the most effective for the particular stage that you come to. But once you get to the point where you can start upgrading some of the ships with multiple weapon types, then you can just pick your favorite ship and stick with that. So that is something I do like. And then, not something I usually bring up, but price point I feel is something that does have to be mentioned. It actually has a really low price point, and even if I'm not super keen on some of the gameplay elements, uh, for what it costs, it's a uh, really good deal, and uh, I, I feel you can easily get your money's worth out of a title like this, that it does have a little bit of a unique setup. And there you have it. Starship Avenger Take Back Earth, served up for your enjoyment. So, this is definitely a title that I can only recommend to those who find the way that it looks interesting. But if you are, it's definitely one that's worth your time to check out. So... That'll just about wrap it up for this week's episode of Shoot 'em Up Saturday. As always, I want to thank you so much for coming out and joining me this week, and I look forward to seeing you again next week.